after that first section, there will be breakout interviews for live content and for TV in the rooms to stand the hall. And if the part of it, guys that stay here, we're bringing uh, for the boys after that. Okay. So we'll get on the way with head coach and NCT for the weekend. Thank you. Uh, the team to play Argentina this Saturday um, from fullback Jordan Lama, Keith Earls on the right wing, Robbie Henshaw and Bundy Aki in the midfield, Jacob Stockdale on the left wing, Jonathan Sexton and Karen Marmion in the halves, uh, loose head prop Ken Healy, Rory Best as captain and Tyke Furlong at tight head prop, Ian Henderson and James Ryan in the second row and in the back row Peter O'Mahony. Sean O'Brien and CJ Stander. The replacements are Sean Cronin, Jack McGrath, Andrew Porter, Dev Toner, and Dan Levy, Luke McGrath, Joey Carberry, and Andrew Conway. Yeah, they're, they're both doing really well. Rob Carney was involved in the session today and, uh, and ran really well. Um, Gary didn't train Tuesday. Um, at a pinch, could potentially play Saturday, but we, we don't want to go into an Argentinian test match with a pinch. We, we want to have guys who are fully fit and ready to go, and not only that, it just gives us a little bit more time to make sure that Gary is ready to train Monday, Monday uh, in preparation for, for, the, for the following week, really. What's his issue? Uh, he just got a bang on the hip, and, and so he's just... He's just recovering from that. He's he's actually probably recovered from that mostly, but at the start of the week, you're trying to make sure that everything is cohesive as possible, particularly because we had to mix two different groups. And um, on the back of that, we only trained Tuesday, getting back in Monday morning from Chicago. We only trained Tuesday, Thursday. We want to maximise the time with um, guys who were fully fit and available and had run in already on the Tuesday to be named on the Thursday. You said Rob's state of fitness, take a decision out of your hands as regards to pullback? Um, yeah, it, it didn't, it didn't, you know. Um, I, I think you're always looking to make decisions and to be proactive about offering opportunity, but at, at the same time, um, there are players who've who've earned a position in the team and, and somebody else has to come along and grab it off them. So, you know, those two will, will probably continue the tussle when, when Rob's available next week. Is Henshaw an option at fullback? We saw him doing so well there for Leinster when he was Yeah, I, I, he's had very little time there. Um, I, I know he played a lot of it and, uh, and was described as, as favouring it during the week, but... Uh, he, he favours contributing to the team to the best of his ability wherever he's selected. You know, it, Robbie is the sort of guy you could pick at seven and he'd go out and he'd do a really good job of it. Eventually you'll have Aki Henshaw and Ringo Spade. What are you going to do? Yeah, I, uh, when Aki Henshaw and, um, and, and Ringo are all fit and, and Chris Farrell's fit, um, I'll, I'll let you know because <laughs> I'm not sure myself at this stage. Yeah, it, it very much is a step up, but it, he's given us confidence on the back of some pretty big test matches where he's come into the game late. Obviously in Twickenham, he came on in the midfield and did a, a really good job. He came on in the third test, particularly against uh, Australia and did a great job coming in at fullback um, and, and acquitted himself really well last week, um, both at fullback and then when he shifted to the left wing. So, you know, that versatility, that enthusiasm, he's a ball of uh, kind of he's a ball of energy from back there and, and that, that gets other other people energized and, and hopefully we can we can maintain that throughout the throughout the game and, and give Jordan some more confidence in what what is building to be a, a really positive introduction to Test rugby so far. What can you tell us about the uh, staying in the squad and Danny coming back in? Um Tyke Burn Again, we're trying to manage his time a little bit. Again, he had his first start last week, did really well, is certainly in the mix. But we had two fresh second rows as well, and we wanted to make sure that they were ready to be in the mix for next week. Effectively, we'll have had five second rows who've had an opportunity to put their hand up for three spots next week. At the same time, 
you've got to give the utmost respect. I mean, Lavanini is two metres oh one. He's 130 kilos. He's at the peak of his powers. He, he is world-class second row. And alongside him, Alamano, he's also a, a, a big, strong man, you know, up around 117, 118 kgs. We, we need to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with those guys. And with them, putting Guido Petty on the, on the side of the scrum, uh, it just that line-out is, is going to be a little bit more challenged than it otherwise would have been um, because Matera can, and Ortega Desio, Desio can, can both contribute at, at line-out as well. So, um, you know, it, it is a bit kind of mixing and matching, but at the same time, we feel we've put a, a really good test side out and they're going to look to demonstrate that on, on Saturday evening. Talk to us about the call between Henderson and Toner and why you went for Ian. Um, as much as anything, it was because Ian wasn't involved last week. Uh, Dev had already had a, uh, a run out last week. Dev's minutes are a lot higher so far this season than, than Ian's. So we felt Ian really needs to put his hand up and you know, probably play at least 50 or 60 minutes. At, at a really good tempo and that's that's a real challenge for him because we know we can get that out of Dev and uh, James Ryan has demonstrated that a number of times this season and and uh, you know earlier on in the year when he was working his way through the Six Nations. Is it a similar story with Kieran Marmion just getting him a bit of time in the 9.30 and was there a temptation to overdo the again? Um, yeah, well, I thought John Cooney was really good off the bench and so yeah, that was a headache and a, a bit of a, an elongated discussion for us. But we felt Luke uh, was probably more familiar with the environment and, and the level. So Luke is on the bench and, and you're right about Kieran. He got some time last week and, and played well. He, he got a knock in the ankle and was just missed probably two games in a row. So we felt it, for him to be in the mix next week, he needed to play this week and also he is probably the experienced hand. He's the guy who, when we lost Connor on the Thursday before playing England a couple of years ago, Kieran stepped straight in and, and did a great job. So he, he's had the most experience, um, and he, he's a great little player for us. When you're coaching, you're bang on track for the yeah, I'd, uh, I'd never describe anything as being on track because there are so many variables between now and then that can upset what we're currently doing. Uh, are we currently comfortable with where we're at? We're never comfortable, you know, it, and you've, you've almost got to be um, resigned to the fact that you're never going to be totally comfortable because there's a couple of positions where we'd like to have more depth. Um, there's a couple of positions where we've got some really good depth and we're not particularly comfortable making decisions week to week because we know there's some really good players who are going to be disappointed. But that drives that group forward and that's what, exactly what we want from them. Um, so, you know, post Saturday, I'd, I'd like to think that we can look at things and be more comfortable that either we've put something together or we've got a few more things that we've learnt that we can put together for the following week and, and, the, and the weeks beyond it. When you were coaching Mario, you like up to his head and ten. you think he'd be your opposite number someday? Or as soon as he's yep, playing? I did. Um, he, he, he was already coaching. He was already contributing. He's a smart player who is, uh, is a good manager of people. So I, I think he had a lot of the attributes. Whenever... Um, Yo, know, if, if Vern wasn't there, I'd always defer to Mario to, to drive the pack, um, mainly because I, I couldn't really speak to them uh, with my hackneyed French uh, phrases. I had a limitation that were mostly backs related. So, um, you know, I, I think he, he's smart. He's already done an incredible job at broadening his own experiences. You know, at international level, he, he was involved with the Wallabies. He, uh, he's been involved with Haguares with, um, with a pretty decent upsurge in their performances and very much an upsurge since the June series um, with, uh, with the national team, the Puma and Argentina. So, you know, I, I think he's already compiled some, some good success, which will give him confidence. And, and certainly I know he's got the, the confidence of the players. How you're back? I think it's the same pack that started the match. 
17 last year. What would be like to have Sean O'Brien back in the ranks? I think Shawnee adds a massive amount to the group. Um, I suppose not only from you know his experience, but his leadership. Um, you know, adding constant voice, and you know, I know he'd been through a tough time in injury, but you know, it's great to see him back out there and um, vo vocal as ever in his high pitch voice, and um, <laughs> I suppose leading us around the pitch. What's the ball like around the pitch? Just knowing you probably want to start and been chatting to him about that. Uh, not so much, I suppose. You're trying to take care of your own job as much as much as you can. Um, but uh, he's he's training well. He's you know he's flying around the place, and you know he adds a massive amount of energy to the group. Sorry, uh, Keen Healy's spoken about wanting Ireland to be the number one ranked team award. That's something that's driving this team. I think every team you're a part of, you want to be ambitious, but um, I think massively as individuals and a collective, you know, we just try to play what's in front of our nose and. I think it's dangerous international rugby to to set yourself those kind of targets and, and maybe lose that short term focus. So, you know, as a group we're I suppose really excited about getting out there in the Viva Stadium this weekend, um, you know, the first home game of the year and, you know, trying to put something good together. Thank you. That's a couple of things. You said obviously with Robbie he's someone who could almost do a job for you anyway. Is that does that almost come above positional um, not, not really. I mean, I think he's great in the positions that he's played for us, both at, at 12 and at 13. And uh, I wouldn't have too much hesitation putting him back at 15. He's got a lot of the, the attributes. Um, it would be a very kind of uh, ad hoc preparation for him to suddenly slot in at 15 on the back of, you know, a fairly short late change. Um, playing away to Treviso, I think it was, for Leinster. So he, in the last few years, he hasn't really had a lot of game time there. And, and it's just a, I think you need a little bit of time to recalibrate if you are going to play in a position. Now, is there anyone more capable of recalibrating? Probably not too many. He's, he's a smart player uh, and he's committed to doing his preparation thoroughly enough that he, he probably would adjust really well. So it is something that... It, has been in the back of our minds for for a long time, as an option if if we needed to go there. So, uh, uh, the one thing I wouldn't say is it's probably not our first option, and it's not something that we're going to necessarily suddenly default to. Um, you know, uh, with both Gary and Rob Carney highly likely to be involved next week, or highly likely to be available for selection at least, then um, you know. I, I think we'll slot Robbie in, and and what I love about Robbie is he'll slot himself in wherever uh, we're looking to get him to contribute. You, I mean, you want specialist players in their specialist positions, don't you? Really, right? More than, it's, it's not about getting a 15 best players on the pitch, is it? Uh, yeah, it's a, it is a mix of that. To be honest, you know, you 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 are looking to get players on the pitch, and and sometimes you know you've got specialists who. There are some positions that are that lend themselves more to being absolutely specialist, and there are some positions where, you know, 12 and 13, for example, you're in the centres. I'd like to think that you know Bundy plays quite a lot of 13 or has done in, in recent years. Um, he's slotted mostly in at 12, and Tom Farrell outside him, and they've done really well for Connett. And again, with uh, Gary Ringrose being in Leinster, Robbie has mostly played 12, but he, he's certainly a really capable 13. Um, and, and for us, you know, players like Will Addison, um, he's obviously slotted in at 15, at 13, and we think he's a super winger. So, you know, there, there, there is flexibility with people. Andrew Conway uh, on the bench, we know he can play fullback as well. So I think you've got to have a degree of versatility. There's got to be a degree of consideration for getting the best players on the pitch, and maybe that's what Mario's looking for, getting Guido Petty on the pitch. With Alamano and uh, and Lavanini this this weekend, you know it's it's not a probably a change up that we foresaw. At the same time, you know I'm sure there's some sense to it. Uh, knowing Mario, there'll be some cunning plan to it, and we'll we'll have to probably decipher it on the run once we once we kick off on Saturday. Okay, guys, we'll shut down this section. Spot on. Yeah. So, TV guys here in June. Cheers. Yeah, thanks. Uh,